Hello, I'm Mrs. Benkovich. I'm a third grade teacher here at Whitman Post, and I'm going to read chapter 18, Jackrabbits Are Actually Hares, which starts on page 167. On presentation day, Scared was definitely running ahead of Excited. Some of the other kids looked nervous too, though. Maybe it wasn't just me. Maybe standing in front of everyone and sharing something important about yourself was just plain hard. Last night, when I decided to ask Dad to bring Lapey, I'd only told him what time to come to surprise my class. But when he came into my classroom carrying the pet carrier, I got a surprise too. Owen stepped into my classroom with him. Miss Hutton's eyebrows went up when she saw them. Her eyes widened to see the pet carrier. Welcome, Miss Hutton said. You must be Emma's family. Such a nice surprise. I thought you cleared this with her, Dad said quietly to me. I told her you were bringing my reveal, but not what the reveal was, I whispered. Then I turned to Owen. Why aren't you at school? He grinned. I had study hall and then lunch, so I asked Dad to pick me up. I know you've had a rough week, and I remember how hard my first week was. I wanted to cheer you on. Excited grabbed the back of Scared's shirt and yanked her backward. Miss Hutton smiled at me. This looks like a fun ending to our program. We'll let you go last, Emma. Last would be perfect. As the other kids stood up and we guessed their lies and saw their reveals, I started to wish I could do, just do mine and get it over with. I did find out something interest. I did find out some interesting things, though. Matt liked hiking, just like Miss Hutton and me. Solange had twin brothers. Sarah collected sea glass. Bryn also had a pet rabbit. I couldn't wait to talk to her about it. And some of the lies were funny. Matt said his dad was a secret agent. Jaden told us he had won a beauty pageant as a baby. Michaela said she had a cousin who was a movie star. I loved watching the Miss Hutton's Fabulous Fifth Graders bulletin board fill up with photos of my classmates' special people, places, and pets. The table showed off cool objects, Sarah's sea glass collection, the glittery slime that Bryn had sold at a craft fair, and Kara's favorite stuffed animal moose. Everyone had interesting things about them, and I was excited to ask some questions to get to know the other kids better. Even if we didn't become best friends, regular friends were good too. Our last group is Iris, Leah, Jack, and Emma, Miss Hutton said. Leah and Iris went first. As their part of the video played, Jack's fingers were fluttering his secret wave at his sides. My hands were shaking too, rattling the photo in my hands. I hope no one noticed, but even if they did, so what? Some other kids had seemed nervous too. When it was my turn to introduce Jack, it was weird to see myself on the classroom TV, standing in my bedroom in front of my bookshelf. I wondered if Jack would notice that I had reshot the video last night and it wasn't the one he'd filmed. Let me introduce you to Jack. His nickname is Jack Rabbit. Though, as Jack will tell you, jackrabbits are not actually rabbits. They're hares. Capable of speeds up to 40 miles an hour, Jack said under his breath next to me. Before coming to school here, I was homeschooled and Jack has been a real friend to me. Here are some statements about him. But only two of them are true. See if you can guess the lie. Jack collects raffle tickets even though he has never won a raffle. Jack built a dinosaur skeleton with 200 Legos. Jack learned to read at the age of three. Most kids guess, guessed the rightful statement was a lie. Wrong, Jack said. The dinosaur, dinosaur skeleton had 730 Legos. I brought a photo to show you because the real model could break. Wow, I heard kids gasp as he showed the photo. That's amazing. Even Owen leaned forward to look and looked impressed. After everyone had admired Jack's photo and seen his book and tickets, Miss Hutton took the photo to put on the bulletin board. Jack, is there anything else you'd like us to know about you? No, he said matter-of-factly. I raised my hand. Could I give something to Jack? Miss Hutton, Hutton nodded. Of course, Emma. 
I reached into my pocket and pulled out a rock. It's not a raffle, but you win this, Jack. I want you to have it. He turned it over in his hand. Rabbit magic, he said, reading the words. My papere used to say that all rabbits have magic, and you have Jack Rabbit magic of your own, I said. Thanks for being my friend. Jack smiled, handing me one of his tickets. You give up the ticket when you win. I smiled back and put the raffle ticket in my pocket. Thank you, Emma, Miss Hutton said. Jack, now it's your turn to tell us about Emma. Jack started the video. Let me introduce you to my friend, Emma. Emma likes to go kayaking. Emma once climbed Mount Katahdin. Emma has a pet parakeet. The kids guessed correctly that the parakeet was the lie. It was pretty easy since Jack had hesitated as he said it, but I didn't care. You're right, I said, but actually none of them are the whole truth. Miss Hutton looked up from the notes she was taking. I wanted to get a good grade on this and these photos would be on the bulletin board for a while. But I also wanted to take a chance and be my whole self, even if the other kids didn't understand or I got a bad grade. My brother, Owen, took a photo of me kayaking, but that's not the photo I brought for the bulletin board. I do like kayaking, but I've always liked it best with Owen. We don't go as often as we used to because he's in high school and busier now. But even though I miss him, I'm really proud of him. And it's extra special when I get to spend time with him. As I turn the photo around, I look slowly at Owen to see if he was embarrassed. When I chose the photo of him, I didn't know he'd be there to see it. Owen smiled at me. I saw nods from some of the other kids too, like they understood. I felt lighter, almost dizzy with relief. I had said the truth and it had been okay. Better than okay. I felt understood. The second truth is that I did climb Mount Katahdin and this rock is from the trail. I held up the rock and turned it over to show the words. My brother wrote, keep going on it because I wanted to quit part of the way up, but you don't ever get past the hard parts if you quit. I couldn't quit here either. The hardest one was last. You're right that I don't have a pet parakeet, I said, but we do have two dogs and for a while we've had a pet rabbit. My dad and I rescued him as a stray and I named him Lappy for the stories my papere used to tell me about a rabbit named Monsieur Lapin. I asked my dad to bring Lappy so you could meet him. I gestured to dad and to Lappy peeking out of his pet carrier. Yay, Kara said, a bunny. He's adorable, Bryn added. Can we pet him? Leah asked. I nodded, but first I have to tell you the whole truth. I felt my throat filling with emotion. I pushed ahead anyway, hoping I could finish before the tears started. I said he was our pet for a while because I found out there were some signs up in town about a missing rabbit. I heard a gasp from the other kids. Owen and dad exchanged confused looks. My brother helped me get the family's phone number. My voice was really shaking now. I need to call them. If Lappy belongs to them, I have to give him back. Beside me, Jack reached into his pocket and took out his phone. Thanks, I whispered to him, but I didn't mean now. It's just for emergencies, he said, still holding it out to me. It did feel like an emergency, even if it wasn't the 911 kind. I looked at Miss Hutton. Could I call? It would be great to get this over with. She nodded. We're all worried with you. Do you want to practice first? Actually, Jack helped me make cue cards. I think I'm ready. I got the phone number and the cue cards from the back of my assignment notebook. Dad came over beside me. I'm sorry, Em. Me too, I replied. But I promised you'd get I promised you I'd give him back if we found his family. And it's like the wild animals you bring home. Even if you wish you could keep them, they need to go back where they belong. The other kids circled around me. I couldn't believe how concerned they all looked. Everyone cross your fingers, Matt said. Seeing them all crossing their fingers, even Iris, gave me some extra courage. Jack held the cue cards so I could read them. 
Owen put his arm around me as I called the number and pushed the button for speakerphone so everyone could hear. Waiting, my eyes went to the bulletin board full of everyone's special photos. Miss Hutton had already put up the photo of Owen and me kayaking. Seeing my photo surrounded by everyone else's made me smile. For the first time, I felt like maybe I could actually belong here. Hello, a woman said.